13 middle brachas of the Shmon Esra, the requests, are really a limud unto themselves. The choice of brachas, the choice of things to ask for, and the order teaches us so much in terms of what it is that a Jew has to be yearning for. If we had to compose our own collection of requests for Shmon Esra, I'm curious what each of us would have chosen as the first bracha. What is the very first thing on our minds? What would we want Hashem to help us with? I wonder, one has to think, what would your priority have been? Look what the Anshei Knesset Sagdala taught us. The first of the requests is Atachonin, the bracha for tzeichel, the bracha for wisdom, the bracha for understanding. That's what it's all about. Life is about seichel. This is more important than your health. This is more important than your finances. More important than anything else is that the Rabbi Nishon give us seichel. Without seichel, we're going to waste our lives away. What's the health for? What's the parnasa for? What are we living for? First and foremost, we need seichel. Seichel to know why we're alive, why we get up in the morning. Seichel to understand the Ratzon Hashem. Seichel to learn His Torah where we learn His Ratzon. Seichel to learn His Torah where we learn how to live. We learn how the Rav Hashem wanted us to use this beautiful world He created for us. Without Seichel, without Seichel, there's nothing. Life is all about Seichel. The Anshe Knesset Sagdoila made it very clear to us. Check your priorities against theirs. The most important thing on the mind of the Yid has to be Rabbi Nishlam, give me Seichel. Give me the ability to understand. Give me the ability to go to go and take the principle and apply it to all my situations. Everything in Torah has something to teach us in the way we live our lives. Everything in Torah is relevant to us. And of course, we want depth. We want the ability to really to get, really get to the bottom of things, beginning, of course, with Torah. But then, Lahabdul, everything in life, to really have seich, to really, really have seich. You know, we don't ask for Yeres Hashem. That's not one of the brachas. Reish is chochmi Yeres Hashem. It's really the most elementary principle in chochm. To know Hashem is reality. Listening to Hashem is a necessity. It's life-giving. But hakol bidei shemaim chutzmi Yeres Shemaim. You can't ask Hashem for Yeres Shemaim. You can ask Hashem for Seichel. And again, Reish is Chochma, here is Hashem. If you really have Seichel, then you are your Reish Shemai. So the first bracha is Seichel. The next bracha is Tshuva. Tshuva. Now, one may ask, Tshuva is when you do a virus. We're davening for Tshuva. We're davening for Tshuva. Hashivainu, bring us back. Hashivainu, Hashem, Surah Secha. Karvainu, Lava, Malkin, Lava, Nasecha. So you have to know. The Rambam teaches us in Hilchus Tshuva that Tshuva is not limited to Averis. Tshuva includes, and in a certain level, not just includes, but is biyikr, midas, improving our midas, perfecting ourselves. Now, where did our midas rolls come from? For the most part, we were born with them. So what's Tshuva? What is tshuva? Tshuva is going back to Hashem. Tshuva is going back to Hashem whom we left when we were born. <laughs> the tshuva is not just from Averis. Hashivainu l'sora secha, first of all, get us to learn to internalize and live Torah. To serve the Rav Shalayla. Help us with the Midas that we need. 
Help us with the midas that we need to really be learning Torah Lishma, to serve the Ravani Shalom the way one should. We're asking for tshuva, not just tshuva from Averis, but tshuva from all of the character flaws we were born with for the sake of perfecting them. And we need some siyat to the Shemaya to be able to do that with our work. After that, we need slicha. We need forgiveness. You can't walk around with your peggle of Averis all day long. We need the Ravani Shem to accept our tshuva and forgive us so that we're clean, we're pure, we can grow bigger, we can become finer. And then, Rei Vanyenu. Rei Vanyenu is the bracha of Gula. Rashi tells us that this tefillah for Gula doesn't mean the Gula of Biyaz HaMashiach. He says Gula here means Gula from Tsaurus. Means Gula from Tsaurus. We ask for peace of mind. We ask that all of Kali Yisrael has peace of mind. The Gemara talks about uh, this bracha being placed where it is, the seventh, because the Gemara tells us that uh, Shvi is Mohammed, the seventh year of that Shemitah when Mashiach is going to come, is going to be a year of Mohammed of war. And Mohammed are Aschal to the Gula that brings us to the Gula in the eighth year. So Rashi says that even though the Gemara is talking about the Gula Hasida, that's only because it's the same words Gal Yisrael, Goel Yisrael here. But in truth, we're not talking about it. Others learn that we are talking about the Gula. And that we're asking the Rabbanishim for the Gula, Laman Shemecha, for the sake of humanity knowing that he is there. After all of these, we ask for health, Rafeinu, and we ask for Parnasi and Baruch Aleinu. No, the most important thing is not your health, the most important thing is not your Parnasi. You need them, they're means. The most important thing is Seichel, get that clear. After Baruch Aleinu, we ask for the Tikkun Ha'olam, for the world to get to the state that it's supposed to be in one element at a time. The first, there is Tka, Tka B'Shay for God, asking for Kibbutz Nidche Yisrael. This is not only a geographic Kibbutz Goliath, it's a Kibbutz Goliath of the Nidochim spiritually. This is a bracha the Yid should cry through. The Rebbe should bring back the Nidochim, we shouldn't lose them. Chas V'Shalom, we shouldn't lose what today's seems to be the majority of the Jewish nation. So we desperately cry to the Ravina Shalom, bring back the Nidochim, whether those that are far away physically, those that are far away spiritually. And then, Hashiva Shevtenu Kvarishonu V'yatzenu Kvatchila, this is referring to the Sanhedrin, which is both Mishpat as well as youth, the leaders, the leadership. Oh, this is another brach you can cry about. First of all, first of all, justice. There is so much, there's so much room for changing the way we treat one another, do business with one another. Falsehood still prevails. But they din are powerless. There's little to do to really bring truth to the table. Integrity. Yeah, individuals that have it are the exception rather than the rule. Hashiva Shevtenik Varishayna, we should have Batei Din, a Sanhedrin, that's able to restore integrity in the Jewish nation. See to it that no one's taken advantage of. See to it that no one is exploiting whatever position they're in. And Yatzeinu, a Sanhedrin, inspired by Ruach HaKodesh, that can really lead the nation Show us what direction to go in. Every individual to show him his Sharish HaNeshama, what he was created for. And Klal Yisrael, to steer it through difficulties. Another desperate plea for the Sanhedrin. Then Chazal put in the bracha of Alam Al-Shinim. A bracha that the Rabbanu Shalom, al Sikva, the Rabbanu Shalom should stop should stop those from within the camp that are doing us damage. From within the camp that are malshin, 
that are telling the world that there's something wrong with us. There's so many self-hating Jews today. People embarrassed of Judaism, people knocking Judaism, Jews knocking Judaism. It's so painful, we asked the Rabbi Nishalim to stop, to stop that phenomenon. Who are these people? The story goes that in the early days of Lakewood, someone approached Rav Aaron Cutler and said he would like to announce in the yeshiva just whom everyone should be mechavim for in Valam Malshinim. He had his list, and Rav Aaron said, have kavana for the Malshinim, and the Rav will decide who they are. And then in sharp contrast, we go to the next bracha. Allah tzaddikim, Allah sidim. Yeah, is gaining the tummy de chachamim. Pleitas sefrehem. The leftovers. We recognize we're not what it was. We're not what it was. Torah is not as clear as it was. We don't have what we used to have. But what we have should be preserved. We should have gdoyle Torah. We should have gdoyle Torah. There should still be people that know everything. And Klal Yisrael should grow in its love for Torah and know and be big. Yeah, we ask for tzaddik. We ask for Sidon. We ask for the skenim of Klal Yisrael. That they should survive, and they should be active, and they should lead, and there should be more of them. Then comes Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim Yircha. We're davening for Yerushalayim. Of all the different aspects of Gula, Yerushalayim has one on its own. The next one is Semach. Malchus based David. We need Malchus. We need Malchus based David. Real leadership. There's Torah leadership. And then there's leadership in the practicalities. The Melech was first in battle. The first thing that Melech HaMashiach is going to have to do is get rid of Amalek. So yes, we need Malchus based David. These are the brachis. For Tikkun Oilam, for the Gula Sida. And then finally, Shema Kaleinu. Ask Nirvana Shalalem to hear our tefillis. It's not enough to talk to Hashem. You have to beg Him to hear you. We ask the Nirvana Shalalem to makabal our tefillis because they're not all worthy of being heard. Not every tefillah is worth being heard by the Nirvana Shalalem. Why should a bracha not be worthy of being heard? First of all, were you thinking when you, when you, when you said the tefillah? Were you really concentrating on the fact that you're talking to the Bar Olam, you're talking to the Creator and asking Him? That's one, but something else. Korav Hashem, l'chol korav, l'chol Hashem, v'emes. They call them out with truth. We spoke about being honest with the Rabbi Nishlam. But a very important part of that when it comes to requests is that we ask the Rabbi Nishlam for our needs. Our needs. We've got to be clear on what we need. Not what would be nice. What we need. We ask the Rabbanu Shem Mekabal our tefillahs because we know they're not perfect. At the same time, we have to make our tefillahs acceptable by making sure that we're not asking for trivia. We're not asking for things that don't make a difference, really. We ask for those things that are important to us because what's important to us, we assume the Rabbanu Shalom knows is important to us. And he doesn't deprive us of that. So asking that our Shem hear our tefillahs also calls for ourselves to really see to it that what we're asking for is what we really need. Clarify for ourselves what we need. And then we can ask and our tefillahs will be heard. Don't leave us empty. Let us not walk away from tefillah and get nothing for it. We should be zaycha for Hashem to hear our tefillahs. Grant us all of our needs and be there for us all the time.